So we made it to the end of season three. Well, this was definitely the best season so far, overall. I would say it's the first really good season. I would agree when speaking about the season as a whole, but it definitely felt like more of the same at the beginning. At the beginning of this season, episodes used recycled ideas, but they did have a stronger foundation and seemed more refined and thought out. That's true, but the fact that they were still so similar in concept just made them less interesting by default. Definitely starting out with things like evolution and the survivors. When do you think it really started picking up? I would say the bonding and booby trap were two pretty strong episodes that stood out among the early ones. I think starting with yesterday's Enterprise, which is pretty much in the middle, everything after that was pretty dang good. Mostly everything. So it was cool this season to get some development of things like the Klingons, the Romulans. We even got to see the Klingon homeworld. We got to see Beta Z. I thought we had a really good Q episode this season. Yeah. They even tied back into the original series and brought back Sarek in a surprisingly satisfying way. Yes, I was happy that the Romulans, who were set up to be this huge threat in Season 1, actually proved to be threatening. Because they didn't do really anything in Season 2. I thought they did a good job of providing some depth to the Romulans and the Klingons as a race, and not making all of them feel exactly the same. I mean, you look at something like The Defector, it was a great Romulan episode. Yeah, with the Klingons and Sins of the Father, and that was a good episode for Worf, too. Probably the best one so far. We had more character development, and I would argue better character development. Agreed. For example, Geordi and Booby Trap, Riker in The Best of Both Worlds. Tam Elbrun in Tin Man. <laughs> I did like that there were a lot more smaller stories this season, like you were saying, more character-focused episodes, but also episodes that weren't about everybody's gonna die or we have to reach this point before whatever. It felt a little bit more confident in itself that it didn't have to stick in some kind of super important plot to make us care about what was going on. And I felt like this season really worked those plot lines in organically. I think of season two when the plot would be present, but at the beginning we'd throw in this three minute nonsensical thing just to try and get into the characters outside of the norm, but it felt shoehorned. That's true. We saw Patrick Stewart do a lot more in this season with things like Captain's Holiday and Sarek and Yesterday's Enterprise. He's okay, I guess. <laughs> I would say all of the characters, to me, feel more like real people now than they did before. Sometimes it's still a little bit too simplistic when they're not the focus of the episode and they just kind of chime in with their typical things. I would say that's Beverly right now. I think part of it is because she missed season two. They brought her back and then she's just kind of there. It's almost like it didn't even make a difference. Her character arcs are pretty much the same as they were in season one. Wesley hasn't done as much this season, which I find surprising, given that he was the focus of a lot of the earlier episodes. And he was about to leave in this season. Yeah, and it was almost like it was just an offhand thing. It's like, well, whatever. He hasn't done anything lately anyway. Troy hasn't really had much to do either. She got a little bit at the end there with Menage Troy, but other than that... That's true. We had a good season closer for once. Right. And I know everyone loves the best of both worlds. Having only seen the first half so far, I did think it was good, and it was a really good cliffhanger. But I wasn't blown away the way I kind of expected to be. Yeah, you gave it a B plus. I'm going to point out I gave it an A. Favorite episode for the season? Oh, man. Yeah, there, there are a bunch I liked. I'm going to go with Yesterday's Enterprise. I would also go with Yesterday's Enterprise. The entire runtime felt important. We've talked a lot about episodes feeling like they were dragged out. This was one that threw you right into everything right at the beginning and successfully made it engaging the entire way through. Pretty much all the lousy ones were at the beginning. Yeah, I barely remember those. Like Evolution, The Survivors. The Ensigns of Command. I like the Shellyak. But it was not a great episode. Well, what's your least favorite then? Honestly, there were a few that were really bad. I know, again, a lot of people like the most toys. I would maybe put that one as my least favorite. Really? But the price is down there too. And who watches the watchers? But I think by the time we get to episode 9, it should have figured itself out. But the vengeance factor was not very good. I'm going to put that as my least favorite. I forgot about that one, and I would agree that that one was pretty far down there. Favorite new character? I would go with the Corbin Burnson Q. I really hope he comes back. Are you being serious? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay, good. I don't know. There weren't really that many new characters. Which I think was a good thing, because it almost felt like throwing in so many new characters in Season 2 was because they didn't know what to do with the established characters, how to develop them further. I agree. 
We had Dr. Scrubs. We had Barclay, who was actually a good character. Why do you say Barclay? It's spelled Barclay, and they do say Barclay, and I stick with Barclay. I say Barclay. Ray Wise, I forgot he was in it. Yeah, that was a waste of a guest appearance. The kid from The Bonding. Okay. <laughs> Worf's brother, Kern. Yeah, I thought Tony Todd did a nice job. I agree. James Cromwell, also kind of a waste. Yeah. Professor Terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Getting Denise Crosby back on for one episode was an interesting choice. And way more satisfying than any of her previous appearances as Tasha Yar. Data's daughter, Lal. Vash. Played off Picard very well. And I didn't think her character type would. Tam Elbrun. Who should have replaced Troy. Fajo. Kivas Fajo. Too bad he didn't stick around so they could shoot him out into space. Luaxana came back. I enjoyed her previous appearances much more. I definitely agree. Yellow Green Man. Riker's rival. Commander Shelby. Glenn Close's younger clone. Overall, this was easily the best season so far, and I'm definitely more invested in the characters and the overall world than I was before. I do enjoy laughing when things are dumb, but I would much rather see good episodes, so I'm glad that the show has headed in that direction. Looking forward to seeing where we're going next. Wrap up that cliffhanger. The show takes a dramatic shift. Picard assembles a Borg crew, and that's the remainder of the show. <laughs> <laughs> he just ditches those other losers. Star Trek, the superior generation. Thanks to everybody who has stuck with us this far. Or if you're just jumping in now. And we hope you'll stick around for the rest of the show. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. Resistance is futile.